The very first thing we did in preparation for installing the windows was to buy and cut a beveled cedar siding board. This was to go underneath each window and act as a sloped sill. If you're going to do this, make sure you account for the extra space required when you're framing. We had to account for both the 2x4 framing and the half inch sheathing, so we set the width to 3 and 7 8 inch. Then it was a simple task to simply cut the board with the miter saw at the width of each windowsill and place them with the slope facing the outside of the house. We decided to do one window completely before starting to multitask on the others. We did a lot of research on how to install a window, but we definitely owe a big thank you to Tiny Nest since their guide was definitely the most applicable and the most detailed. With the first window done, we felt comfortable enough to split up and start prepping the rest of them. The blue flashing membrane we're using is a product called Blue Skin. Blue Skin! <laughs> it's not cheap, but seems to work really well. Our windows are all really basic sliders purchased right off the shelf. We didn't want to go crazy with windows since they're expensive and we were pretty intimidated by the task in general. That's kind of a running theme with the house. They ended up being way easier to install than we thought and it was really cool to see them installed into the house. The first step to installing the window was, of course, to cut away the house wrap. We saw this referred to as the upside down wine glass. You start by cutting along the bottom of the header from corner to corner. Then starting in the middle, you cut down a straight line until about 6 inches from the sill. After that you cut up at 45 degree angles from the two lower corners, then across to meet your cut in the middle. Most of the flaps get cut away after, so you probably don't need to be all that precise. Just fold the flaps in, staple them down, and cut away the excess. We taped it all down just to keep it from going anywhere or flapping about. You also want to cut a flap above the window like so, because this overlaps the flashing above the window. You always want to make sure that the water has a path to reach the ground that won't allow it to go behind your house wrap. Now, here's Jackie to explain the installation process step by step. Okay, so we just finished installing all of our windows and we have one left here to do. So we're just going to do a quick little demonstration. After the paper is cut away, you have to tape it down so that it's out of your way. So what we do is just push it in and then you run just some staples, maybe down the middle. Just a few, every whatever. And then just push it back and tape it. Make sure it's nice and tight. Try to do the corners as best as you can as well. Um, it doesn't need to be watertight because you're gonna put blue skin over top of all of this anyways, but try to do the best you can. We also cut a flap on the top because there'll be another strip of blue skin along here. So this will just be moved out of the way so that we can put that strip on, but we don't need to do that right now. So what I'm gonna show you right now is installing the blue skin along the bottom. So what we did was we cut some blue skin squares. So then to apply them, they're really sticky, so you have to be careful, but they have this backing that just peels off like so. And then you just kind of try and center it on the, on the corner of your window in the middle of the square, which is kind of hard to do, but it doesn't need to be perfect. So maybe about there. And then just push it on. It's like a rubbery tar, so it'll stick really well. You take your knife, and you, we're gonna wanna wrap it around the corner as much as we can, going in. You wanna find your corner, and then you wanna leave about a half an inch or so. So about here, and then just slice it out towards the corner, or the diagonal. And then, as you feel the corner, you're gonna wanna kinda push it in with your finger. And just try and get it nice and tight. It's really gooey, so it doesn't cut very nice, but. And then find your corner. Yeah, and then you just push your corner in a little bit as you're wrapping it nice and tight against the side there. And then the same with the bottom. 
and as you can see it tore a little bit it's just because you're stretching it so much but it's okay because it's still like going over the corner part here which is the most crucial so now that that's on you're ready to put a piece along the bottom so because our window is 18 inches wide we cut ours to um, overlap on each side by four inches so what we do when we put these ones in is, again, you're just kind of going to eyeball it, but you try to make it so that you have about four inches going up on either side. Something like that is probably good. Okay, so after you've got it in place and you have approximately the even amount, you know, on either side, you're going to want to start peeling off the backing and start with one side and go to the next. I would not recommend peeling off the whole thing because it is so sticky and you won't have it straight. So we figured out it's best if you just Start with one side, so you can get a piece here, and just peel it back a little bit so that you can get it started. And then kind of work your way towards the corner, because if you start up here and then try to go down, you're not going to be straight or anything, so you want it to line up with the inside of your, of your sill. Just tuck it right up against the edge of your sill, and run it along nice and tight. And then when you get to the corner, just kind of use your thumb, your finger, and just push it into the corner so it's nice and snug. It's pretty stretchy stuff, so if you don't get it all the way, don't be scared because you can just push and it'll just, it's like, I don't know, really stretchy rubber, so it'll go. And then just kind of push it up the sides. You're going to get wrinkles because it's just really sticky and annoying. So now you got a good end started. As you're going along, keep one hand on the bottom and then just kind of line it up and stick as you go. This is a pretty small window, so it's not really that bad. And then just kind of keep going along. And again, when you get to the corner, try and keep it nice and tight in there with your finger. And then just push it up the side. And then you just cut your corner pieces because now this is gonna have to seal over top of that little cut that we made over there. So with this, we were leaving a little bit more, maybe about a half inch or so. So I'm gonna start about here, and just cut out, just straight. Wow, so gooey. Okay, that did it. And then again, just put your finger from the top and just push everything this way so that the folds will go over top of your of your corner like that so that you know the blue part is going over top of your uh, corner corner where the actual hole is it's really really stretchy so this black stuff just like kind of goes over top of it which is pretty good actually do it again over here, so maybe about there. And then again, just use your finger to kind of feel where the corner is and then just like push really hard so that it's stretched nicely around there and nicely on the bottom. And then, yeah, just kind of mold it on there. Make sure all your corners are down. This roller, by the way, <laughs> was $35. And I don't think entirely necessary. <laughs> but nonetheless, it gets out all the little bubbles so that, you know, it's a little bit smoother. You could probably just do without it though. I don't think that I would use this again. If I was doing it again, personally, I don't really think it's that helpful, but kind of that extra peace of mind that you got everything flat and where it needs to be. So we just kind of run over it like that. Smoothing it all out. Now you're ready to test fit the window. Um, shims that we cut 
are, we're using two because we couldn't quite do it with just the one. So we have them going the same way from big to little and then going, you want them to go in the opposite direction that your slope is going on your sill so that it's sitting flat. So then, yeah, so then we leave these in, we put in the window, we'll test fit it, we'll make sure that the gap is the same along the bottom and the top. If we need to raise it up a little bit, we'll put some more shims in there and make it so that it's sitting really well. So we're gonna do that right now. Here we go. Facing look on either side. So now we take the window out again. Everything is looking great. Try not to drop and lose the shims. Tape the shims into place so that they don't move when we're putting in the window. So you can even roll it under a little bit along the side because then when you go to fill the airspace around your window, um, you won't have a bubble there. And then once that one's down, roll this one under and put it down on top of it. And then you got a nice little tight shim, ready to rock and roll. Roll it under and then just push down and flatten it out. There you go. Now we're ready to put in our window. Windows and doors, acrylic latex. We've been putting a bead really close to the rough opening because we've realized that if we go too far, um, it doesn't work very well. It just gets shot out the top of the flange and you don't need very much. I mean, it's only here for a seal, an extra seal. So just a thin bead works quite nicely. And then we leave the bottom because in case any water happens to get in there or runs in from the sides or whatever, or moisture, you want it to be able to escape. So if you caulk along there, you're kind of being counterintuitive to that. So you just leave that bone dry. I'm gonna get the window and we're gonna put it in. Sure you realize we didn't take the labels off. It's important to do that. You don't have to take them off perfectly, but try to get them off because when you go to spray foam in there, if the stickers are sticking like on an angle like this or something, you won't be able to get insulation under the sticker. So just make sure that this whole flange area is nice and clear of anything. Give it a good inspection too to make sure it's not dirty. So when you're putting it in, start at the bottom and kind of just rest it on your shims. It's hard to see on the outside if it's centered. So that's why Sean's gonna go inside and tell me if it needs to go left or right. But for the most part, I, all I have to do is get it in and rest it on the shims. So that's what I'm gonna try and do on my own. Okay, one side. So how's it looking? You're pretty good, just push. You go this way a bit, not really moving much. Okay, that might have been too much. Wait, okay, it's good. Okay, I'm gonna start by kneeling it in the top. You really don't have to hold it too tight because it kind of sits on its own. Okay, so I'm just hitting my finger. So, some people say to not put anything in the top um, because headers are a special kind of framing, I guess, piece of framing that can expand more than other pieces like where this is being drilled into. But we decided to fixate just two nails in instead of using screws so that if it does expand, it should just push the nail out if anything. And hopefully there's more give there that it won't cause any serious problems. But on the sides, we're using screws and we're using two inch pan head screws so that the bottom part will fixate like nice and flat against the flange. They say that you should have about 16 inch spacing. So on a window that's this big, I mean, really just putting one here and here is plenty. You don't need to use every single hole. So I'll just start by putting one down here. And don't go too tight because it'll actually, like you can see the flange bending and you know that when it's tight cause it's nice and flusher, but this will be a little bit above, right? So, I mean, that's, that's tight. You can see caulking coming out of there, so it's fine. Lots of awesome caulking coming out there. It's a good sign.
So then that's that. So now we're ready to put our blue skin down the sides and then we'll put a strip across. So with these, it's actually easiest if you just peel the entire thing right off. I'm gonna start with this side. And then you wanna make sure that you have about three inches on either side. So I kinda just start at the top, make sure you got about three inches. Let her go. Line her up along the side. Nice and straight down the edge of the window. And overlapping onto the blue skin on the bottom. You want to make sure all your blue skin is in layers from bottom to top so that water will always run over top onto your bottom layers. Then you take your roller. Don't get your hair stuck to it if you're like me and careless and don't put your hair back. My cable is getting caught to the ugliness. Help me. Thank you. So you just kind of line up again. Three inches at the top roughly, which is about there. Try to get it lined up along all the way down. Nice and solid. Okay. So then, you proceed to do your top one. You wanna go an inch past because you wanna um, cover as much of this as you can. So if you come out to here, it'll cover it nicely. So then you just proceed to do the best you can with trying to line it up. I kind of just start on one side and just get it down so that's about an inch over, right about there. Run it along. Beautiful. And then you can take your flap, detach it. Try not to rip your Tyvek. You might rip, rip a few fibers off, but it's okay. And then we were just folding this little piece. So that's out of the way. And then you proceed to tape up all of this. So again, layering tape, start at the bottom, and then this one, and then you wanna tape along your blue skin. And then, um, yeah, you're pretty much good to go. You are ready to start your trim and then your siding. So yeah, so that's it. That's how you install a window. Yeah, cool. That's it. Thanks for watching. It really helps me out if you hit that thumbs up if you like this video and click on the Rookie Roost logo to subscribe to the channel. If you click on that little bell icon, you can get an email notification when new videos go live. You can also follow the daily progress of the build on social media and over at the Rookie Roost website. Check the description below for the links.